The final table that we need to add to the database is the lesson table. Now this time no data has been added. So we're going to create the table from scratch because we haven't got a text file to import it from. So under create we're just going to select table and it's already put an ID in for us. And if we go to design view we'll save our table as lesson and we want this to be a lesson ID. It's already an auto number. But let's have a look at what data needs to be stored about the lesson. It says it needs to include the date, the time slot, the instructor, the car and the learner. Now these three here, instructor, car and learner, are foreign keys to the other tables. So let's start with the date. Uh, we can just put date in, but when we type it in, it's not going to recognize it because it's also a data type. So I'm going to call it lesson date. And this time it's going to be a date or time. And down here we'll format it as a short date. We've then got time slot. Now, if I create a field called time slot that is text, and if we look at this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, include the spaces, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 characters. What we end up with are time slots that look like this. 0800 to 0900. Now, this is a start time and an end time which isn't atomic data. So we need to split it into atomic data. Now it's not absolutely essential, but it does help when it comes to wanting to compare times if we need to do that. And if we need to compare times, we can't use text like we've got there. So I'm gonna go back to our design view and we're gonna have here, uh, we'll have the time slot start and we'll have a time slot end. And we'll do it as a date time, formatted to be a time. And then we'll have our time slot end, again date time, but formatted to be short time. Finally, we've got our three foreign keys, instructor, car, and learner. Now these are going to link to the ID fields in the other tables. So if we have a look at one of the others, for example, uh, instructor, you can see it's instructor ID. And if we look at the design view, it was set as an auto number, which is a long integer. So how do we do this? Well, we could type in instructor ID. Problem is that that means we've now got two instructor IDs in our database, one in the instructor table, one in the lesson table. Good practice would say that we put the name of the link table, which is this table, lesson, in front of it. So we know that it's the lesson instructor ID. Now we're not going to set this to an auto number because if we do, it will be applied automatically, one, two, three, four, five, and we can't choose which instructor we want for each lesson. So this is actually a number, which is a long integer. We're going to do the same for the car. And we're going to do the same for the learner. Okay, that's our table finished. Now we could start entering data in there, but before we do, we're going to set up our relationships. The reason being, if we set the relationships up now, there is no data that can stop those relationships from forming. <clears throat> the only thing that we get wrong is if we had got these data types incorrect. So we're actually going to do our relationships before we do anything else. I'm going to set one of these purposefully wrong. So I'm going to set this to be text and it's the learner ID so we can see what happens when we do our relationships. So relationships under database tools and we're going to add all four tables our entity relationship diagram 
And this is quite simple. The one that links them all is lessons. So we'll keep that here. We've then got our instructors and we've got our cars. So our car ID, we'll link that to car. Okay, and we need to enforce referential integrity. What that means is that we can only put in a car ID here that exists in the car table here. That means that referentially referring from this table to that table, there has to be integrity, that's truthfulness or honesty of the data. So there must be a car ID that exists. So there's our first relationship. Now we'll do our instructor ID, enforce it again. Now look, it's a bit untidy here, isn't it? So all we've got to do is just swap these two tables over to tidy that up. So this time we're going to look at what happens when we put the learner ID and link this foreign key to the primary key in the learner table where we know that the data types don't match. This is just to show you what could happen if you make an error. So when I create relationship, it says relationship must be on the same number of fields with the same data types. Now this is because what I've done is that one was set as text and that one was an auto number, which is a long integer. So we'll close and save our relationships, go back to our lesson table, look at that in design view, and there's our problem. So we'll change it so it's a number, long integer. Now, when we go to our database tools and relationships and create the relationship, there will not be a problem. So looking at our learner table again, uh, here's our data and we've got, for example, learners one through to 26. So if we look at our lesson table, let's say we create a lesson uh, for the 15th of October. We'll choose a time slot and we've got to choose one of the ones that exists, so uh, nine o'clock. Uh, that means the time slot end will be 10 o'clock. And then here, we've now got to put in an instructor, a car and a learner. So I know that learners, I've got one through to 26. So if I choose number two, Roger Harrison, that should be okay. We'll have a look at the cars as well. So for the cars, I'm gonna choose car number three, the Volkswagen Beetle. And for the instructors, I'm gonna choose instructor number one, Angela Keepax. And that should accept our data absolutely fine. Uh, so we'll do another one now um, for the 17th. Uh, this time we'll have a 10.30 start of the lesson time slot, which means an 11.30 finish. And we're going to choose an instructor that doesn't exist, number 19. Right, just to show you this referential integrity. So when I put number 19 in, I will go for a car that exists, number one, and a learner that exists, number one. Look at this. You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in table instructor. There's the instructor table. That is the problem. We cannot put one in because 19 doesn't exist. Put in 17 and it's absolutely fine. Let's just make these uh, columns a little bit wider so you can see the data in there. Now what you've got to do is put in some uh, other records. It tells you there must be at least six records. You should put in a few more. Try and uh, put in some where you've got uh, the time slots being the same time slot, but a different instructor, different car and different learner. Try and put some in where you've got the same instructor. So we'll have another one with instructor one. Let's have another one somewhere else with car three and another one somewhere else, for example, with learner one. So we can just make sure we can put in these multiple values. Uh, we also need to make sure that we've got lessons both in the past and in the future uh, for when we come to do three part C. So that will be the next thing that you move on to now will be three part C, uh, but just finish off uh, those records and adding them in.